Now, once we get access to that information, in order to make sense of it, computer vision technology is necessary. To understand what we're seeing, computer vision technology is necessary. Well, one of the most important things we're announcing with the Drive PX is a revolutionary technology called Deep Neural Net Computer Vision. Traditional computer vision basically works like this. Engineers code what is featured detectors, and they figure out if you want to detect a person, if you want to detect a car, if you want to detect a sign, engineers would go and engineer featured detectors that has the ability to represent and detect and classify those objects. They would then train it and test against it a bunch of known good and known bad images. This is what a pedestrian looks like. This is not a pedestrian. Each and every one of those objects, each and every one of those classes, if you will, has to be hard-coded by engineers. And they use a technology called SVM. And these SVM uh, support vector machines are able to detect a few objects. And state-of-the-art today can detect pedestrians, cars, signs, and lanes. However, if you want to figure out a way for your car to become situational aware, we're going to have to detect a lot more than those four things, and I'll explain why in just a second. We want to detect, of course, all of those things, but so much more. A revolutionary technology has emerged in the last several years called deep learning. Now, recently, we're starting to see a lot more understanding of the impact of deep learning. This is a technology that is only a few years old, revolutionized by two very important artificial intelligence researchers, one, Jan LeCun, and the other, Jeff Hinton. Jan is over at Facebook now, Jeff is at Google. Now what's happened is they recognize that neural nets are in fact a wonderful technology, however, uh, it didn't have the benefit of several things. And recently there was an important paper that was written and Wired picked it up. One of the three technologies was massively parallel and cost-effective processing. The GPU was named as one of the three important breakthroughs that made it possible for researchers all over the world to finally use deep learning in a productive way. The second is the vast amount of images, vast amount of voice data, the vast amount of data that we're able to access now. Because of course, mobile computing, because of mobile devices, cameras, and voice recognition all over the place. And the third is new algorithms, that is what they're referring to, deep neural nets. Now here, this interesting graph that I show you on the right is the Olympics of computer vision and image recognition. This is ImageNet. Now, ImageNet represents basically a thousand classes. Your job is to recognize a thousand different things. A thousand different things. And then the contest basically consists of who can recognize with the greatest accuracy out of the 1.2 million images that is going to be served to you. 1.2 million test images, and you have to recognize 1,000 things. And whoever has the greatest accuracy wins. Now, they've been progressing for the last decade a couple of percent per year using the traditional feature detectors, support vector machines, engineers working really hard to detect more and more objects. All of a sudden, the GPU comes along, the deep neural network was invented, and bam, in literally just one year, it shot up from 74% to 84%, and now GPU accelerated deep learning can now recognize images better than most humans. It's well over 90% now. Now here's what a deep neural network lo looks like. It's inspired by biology, and it basically works like this. It starts with the first principle that if you have a neural network and you have an enormous amount of input, a lot of input images, and an enormous amount of tagged output images, what it's supposed to be, if you have a lot, of, a lot of input, you have a lot of output, known good output, eventually you could train the neural net to recognize images by itself. Now this is a deep neural net 
the training of it is intensely computationally intensive. And basically what it does is you, without any programming, except for setting up the neural net, the algorithm of calibration and retraining is extremely complicated. But after that, you let it go, and you run it for, as it turns out, before the GPU came along, months at a time. The GPU was revolutionary because we were able to take training sessions that would take weeks and months down to hours and days. Now what happens is this. You train this network, and you keep showing it images, and every time it's wrong, every time it's wrong, it makes a small change, and it tries it again. The search process, eventually, of figuring out how to weigh each one of those neurons, each one of those circles is a neuron, and each one of those wires is essentially a synapse. There's a weighting on every single synapse, so that depending on what you see, what, it, what patterns are recognized, eventually it fires the neuron. Okay? So there's a neuron inside, in this particular example of detecting an Audi, there's a neuron in there for detecting a wheel. And that neuron is built up of small segments and curves and maybe some hubcaps and stuff and hubs and, and eventually it builds up a wheel. Maybe there's a, there's a grill. Maybe there's some headlights. And it literally does this all by itself. It literally does this by itself. Now, of course, the training process is very complicated and you need a processor with a lot of computation capability so that you can process this deep neural net and classify objects. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this, because each one of the layers of the deep neural network builds on the previous layer above it, before it. So on, the, on your right-hand side, or my left-hand side, that layer, the first layer, ultimately learns to recognize small segments pieces of fragments of images. The layers next to it, the deeper layers, the hidden layers, might take these segments and turn them into curves. The layer after that might take a bunch of curves and turn one of the neuron and recognize one of the neurons to be a wheel. Another neuron could be a grill. Another neuron could be the windshield. Another neuron could be the symbol of Audi. And so the beautiful thing about this neural network is once you've trained it, once you've trained it, if you ask it what's a car, it is likely very similar network as what is an Audi. And if we train it to recognize Mercedes, it would recognize Mercedes, and it would leverage the vast majority of the same network. Okay, so imagine this is really, imagine running a, a program, it's highly nested, and so it becomes a very efficient program. Now, the benefit of this is the notice, the classification of recognizing a pedestrian and recognizing a, for example, a pedestrian is straightforward. However, if the vast majority of that pedestrian was occluded, a traditional feature detector wouldn't recognize that as a pedestrian because a pedestrian has heads and arms and legs. In this particular case, because this deep neural network has the ability to recognize subclasses, it would recognize that, guess what? It's got a head, it's got a couple of arms, even though it's missing legs, it's likely a human. It's likely a pedestrian, it's likely a person. Recognizing a car is something we can teach a traditional computer vision algorithm. However, different classes of cars, and maybe different classes of cars in different conditions, for example, if a school bus were to pull up relative versus a car, a school bus, the way that you would approach that condition, that situation would be very, very different. And if all of a sudden the lights of the school bus was flashing, again, you would become even more alert, even more aware of the situation. So just detecting the fact that it's a car is not good enough. If you detected a car behind you, that might say absolutely nothing. However, if you detect an ambulance behind you, you might decide to pull aside. So the important thing to recognize here is that rec recognizing and detecting objects is just a starting point of an intelligent car. That recognizing what the images are and the context of those objects is highly important. 